M0FXB. So yeah, welcome to All Star Link. The All Star is linking repeaters around the world um, using some very good software. And the best thing about it is you can link to it using a normal FM analog HT, like your Bofung. So let's have a quick look. So there are people in the UK, G7 RPG. That is that will make a a node for you, uh, and these these work very well. They, this is what they look like. So you've got a Raspberry Pi here, you've got a C One OS sound fob here, a little buck. They call them buck converters, but it's basically twelve volt goes in and comes out and powers. You know, at the voltage you can change to power the Raspberry Pi that's doing that's got the image on it that basically it's like a computer that boots up to run the, the All Star system. That you can m change settings using putty. Uh, anyway, the the sound fob is obviously getting your audio, which you can adjust within the settings of putty. And then you, you actually the thing that's uh, doing the work for the node as well is that is he's got a little bowfung here. I think it's triple A S, uh, which has been converted. So it's almost acting like a hotspot. You know that you're talking with your FM radio to the this modified Bofung, um, and that's linking you to the Raspberry Pi 3, which is linking you to All Star. So, I'm in the process of building mine, and so I've been finding out lots of information. And I thought I, this this site here was quite a good site to look at. So, if what they've done is called AllStarSetup.com, they've put everything in one place that you would need. So, uh, it's what it says here. You know, he's basically put it all into one place. So let's just go through it one at a time. So, all star no designs. So this is what the box looks like. Seventy centimeter antenna, and everything you just seen in this image is basically inside that box. It won't be identical because made by a different person. Then the CM one hundred eight based mini note. The CM one hundred eight is. Is this? This is the sound fob, which has been modified, and you know they've taken it apart and they've soldered on. There's transistors and resistors and all sorts soldered to it in a different picture. So let's have a look. Let's look down here. That's a few other designs, but the, the one I'm looking at is this one. So let's have a look at modifying the sound fob. So as as I said here, this is pretty much what you do. Uh, I, I'm not, you know, that technical, but there's a transistor here where they've removed these two sections here. They've added on these connections, which in turn connect to either the Raspberry Pi or I think mainly the, uh, the wires are leading to the radio, the Bofung, which is, the reason they use that Bofung is because it's very cheap and easy to modify. Uh, the trickiest part of the soldering is going to be these very fine 30 gauge wires here where you're actually you know tagging on the main thing is to make sure you use good flux tin the ends of the wires and and, and luckily the ones you need to connect to are on the corners so that's going to help so this picture actually makes it look easier but it's quite fiddly because certain connections i think this one here uh, has or one of these two has got like three things connecting to it and you know you've got a transistor um, but it's it's okay, you know, you've got to be very patient. So a good picture there on, um, you know, with with what you've got to do. I haven't clicked these two here, but I will click them. See what picture we get. And that's how it looks originally. Um, so sound fob for you. Yeah, that's the actual fob. They've got some uh, little diagram here of what you're what you've got to get up to and uh, look there's the uh, sort of step by step I'll put all these links in the description step by step what you've got to do so you've stripped it off cut this these two links here and here and here three actually um, then you've got the transistor I'll probably use this when I do mine I haven't got the bits yet so there you go there's your transistor and he's added another resistor there as well. There's that wire. So that's what I meant by it. one of them has got like three connectors. 
um, PTT wire that goes on the corner here this is probably the hardest soldering bit I would say so that's a nice close-up picture that makes it nice and clear uh, and then these these tails here so I really like that that was a well worth that's one I'm definitely going to be looking at when I make mine let's just go back one uh, surface mount resistor that's interesting how that looks probably a bit neater I would say yeah you can see the little surface mounts here so that is neater fiddlier but neater I think so yeah there you are surface mount resistors so let's go back right so once your fob's made then you've got to modify the bowfung so ah so I've never done this yet so I will be doing programming the actual radio once you get the both and before you butcher it um, do this first so you're gonna need your PC and uh, a cable that connects the radio to you know your PC a bit like programming a MD380 type thing but they're using chirp I think pretty sure this is chirp yeah so there you are and then it's once you've programmed it and I'll be following this step by step. There's the actual radio. Um, taking it apart. And then look. You know, this is what uh, they're doing here. Removing that. Removing the LED. Now the blue circle. Does that just mean that they're tinning it? Uh, I'll use it properly. You know, I'll read it properly when I do it. I've got a desolder pump to get a few bits off. So it's step by step, letting you know where to add your wires. You know, if you're careful and slow and step by step, these bits here all all very inexpensive. It's about eleven pound for the radio. The fob's about two pound. The the this cable was was like three four quid. So I don't know if I got let's pay too much for that cable. I've got that. I've got this. You can use the antenna here from the actual Bofung radio. Um, so that's, yeah, read that through step by step and that will definitely show you how to build the, the um, you know, to modify the Bofung. Get yourself a Raspberry Pi 3B as well. Let's just see what else is on here. B3, All Star No Designs. We'll just click that and see what shows up. No, so just go back here. So the Raspberry Pi, just finished by talking about the Raspberry Pi. Get yourself a Raspberry Pi 3B. Now, when you want to um, find the, the, you know, the download, uh, sorry, the um, image for this, then you go to Ham VoIP. Let me just see if I can find that on here. Just got to remember where that was. I should have had that link on it already, really. Ham VoIP. Uh, let's put Ham VoIP. Ham VoIP. Here it is. Yeah. So go to here, Ham VoIP. And again, I'll have all these links in the description. Go to download. And then scroll down. And yeah, this is the one here. Um... Let's have a look. Let's get it right. So I used, I actually used Bellina Etcher because uh, I prefer using that because I'm used to it. But so this is to transfer the image. Bellina Etcher is free, so there it is. Download it, and it's for transferring the image that you download onto your basically your micro SD card, and it's very straightforward. You select the image in a file that you've stored it, select the SD card, and send it across. So you can the initially better to set start uh, connecting it via the network connection, and then once you you've got it connected, then you can go into it using Putty. Putty looks like this, uh, which you have an IP address eventually uh, to um, you know change configurations. So I'm waffling on a bit. So Lena Etcher, let's go back to. Ham, um, yeah, this page, hamvoip.org. So, the image that I used, 
pretty sure was this. So you download this. Once you've got the um, zip, this X is quite a big file. Um, save it somewhere, and then use Belina Etcher, or you could use Win32 Disk Imager. Get that image onto the SD card. Put that into your Raspberry Pi 3B. Yeah, plug that into your network, and what you'll do is it will it will show up. Um, let's see if I can um, show you what it looks like when it shows up. I'll just um, just plug plug my one in. And so if I go to my network here, one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one. I'm pretty sure is my network and now if it's given it enough time to boot up just log in there there it is there so what will show up is where's it gone a l a r m p i and it's if you look here it's it's showing up on 192.168.1.100. Um, so if I put that in here on mine, now it's all been set. 192.168.1.100. Now, because my server's running, you get this. It just says this is a test. Now, if I put a forward slash um, and put supermon, You'll go to my my node page, and I can log in. Um, doesn't really matter if I log in now, because I've got no hardware connected apart from the apart from the actual Raspberry Pi. There you are. So I'm logged in. Right. So I'm logged in now. Anyway. So, but to get to that point. Yeah, you need to go into Putty to configure this. Now, this, I've done a separate video on this, uh, which I'll, I'll add a link to that in this description as well. Uh, it's always port 222. You just basically put in, to talk to it, you put in your IP address, which is 192. You've just seen that. 68.1.100. And it will log me in now to Putty. It always has, comes up with that message. And then I've got to put in my... Um, username and password and you log in and then you go through the the whole setup process um uh, can't really remember the username and password right now so i'll try it i've got my let's see if that works yeah and you go into this configuration menu and then uh, like I said, I'll add a link to how you configure it. Uh, so this is what you see when you use Putty. It's a bit confusing, you know, because it's a bit scary if you've never used Putty, but but um, it, it does work. So so anyway, the end result is you end up with your your nice note. Now you can get one from G7 RPG. I highly recommend that. And Ben, I think Ben's been selling them as well. If you go on eBay um, and just put in. Um, all star node there's ben's ones uh very nice guy and if you look on on youtube ben's done some step-by-step -step videos as well so all star node let's just click that it's ben's idiot's guide to 20 bmt and he he tells you what bits to get and there's a f I think six parts, as you can see. And these cost about a pound. There you go, and that that helps you. And so if you use all these all the different things that I've shown you, you'll be able to build yourself a, your own all-star node. Why not for fun? And the parts, I think you can actually get the, all the parts you need for under seventy pound. And then you, if you've got some, like many hams have skills of basic soldering and some fine soldering, so make sure you've got a nice fine soldering iron, uh, fine solder with plenty of flux. Uh, it's very doable. 
and then um, get onto the All Star Network, which connects you, you know, all over the place, and an Echo Link. Um, so lots of information there. So I hope this helps. So uh, build yourself a uh, an All Star Node seven three from M zero FXB.